Hello there, David Thompson here from the world of tech.net with a certainly different review. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a rather good Epson projector. Well, I say good, yes, it is pretty good, I am quite impressed with this, so this is going to be a very positive review. This is the Epson EHTW3200. It is indeed a gaming projector, so it specifies and is specifically good at projecting your gaming content, may it be Xbox or PlayStation 3, onto the wall. It also performs well with your computer, and also DVD players, anything you want to plug into it. So I'm going to start by showing you around the device. It is quite large and it is larger than any other projector you'll come across really. It's not one of them little small form factor ones, it is indeed large. I'm just going to show you what I've got here. There's the lens and here is my camera cap for my camera lens and there's the size of the lens so it's a pretty big lens and it's a very large projector however it is large but it does project high quality a very high quality image onto the wall as I will show you later on so around the front of this large projector we do have the fan here a nice big fan but I've found that it does make quite some noise it's not the most quiet fan but it does get the job done it flows nice cold air through the projector and I haven't once had it overheat and I have had it on for quite some time quite a long amount of time along here as you see here there is some little things which alter and adjust the position of the lens. However, I have found it a lot easier if we just take the cap off there. If instead of using these, which aren't very good as they do retract back very easily and it's very hard to reposition the lens, but it is good for making little adjustments, for minute adjustments, but I found it a lot easier just to actually grab the lens and push it across. I know I probably shouldn't do that and it's not best for the projector, however it is a lot easier and you haven't got to mess around with these silly things. You can twist it to get the focus and I will show you how it focuses later on. I'm still still very much bemused to why these projectors don't have an automatic focus, but, but different devices means different focus points, so I suppose a manual focus makes lots of sense. So that's pretty much everything I've got to say about the front of the projector. On the back we have a power button and we also have an exit button for your inputs and whatever you want to plug in. Talking about inputs, we have what two HDMI inputs. Um, I wish there was another VGA really, because there's only one VGA just there and two HDMI. I don't see why I would need two HDMI's, however, having the two HDMI's is very useful. Here we have a component input, an RGB, whatever you want to call it, component, and this is where we can plug in things like a DVD player. I'm glad it has the component input and the video here, but unfortunately I've found that this projector doesn't have built-in audio. Well, you can plug in things like speakers to it and then output your speakers, however, the built-in, it doesn't have any built-in audio, which is quite a disadvantage, so if you want to plug something like a DVD player in, your sound isn't really going to work. Along here we have S-Video, which is quite old school, you might really, might really use S-Video anymore, but I'm glad it's there because if I ever needed S-Video, not that any of my laptops or devices have S-Video, it is there to use. I also like having a maximum range of ports on my devices, and this really does have the maximum range. It's got the video here, which is the yellow one, and that's useful for plugging in non-HD devices like an old set-top box, DVD players, literally anything, even a PlayStation. 2 or a Nintendo Wii. Along here it's got a serial port which I'm guessing is really for maintenance putting firmware updates. I can't really see a practical use for that apart from updating firmware and it's got the trigger out which I don't really need to use neither will the general consumer. This is only for people who want to put it up on the wall. Down in the bottom right corner we have an on and off switch and of course the free pin power plug. Here we just have an intake for the fan and we can actually take that out and clean out the filter which it's nice to have easy access to the filter. I would say this is a very consumer based 
projector, it's not really for the professional line as it's really easy and simple to set up and use. Anybody could use this projector. However, one thing is the size, and I will show you it in proportion to the room later on. When you're trying to project it onto the wall, the projector is just too big. Here is the projector from above. It's not the thinnest projector at all. I've seen projectors about that thin, and this is in comparison about that thick, and it is quite large. So when it's in your room, as I've just said, you have got to bring it back a lot to get a big picture on the wall. A little one for rooms the size I have would be a lot better, and that is what would be ideal for me. However, if you've got a large room, this is perfect, but if you've got a small room, please keep away from this projector. I'm now going to show you what it's like in the room with some gaming devices, a DVD player and even the laptops, VGA and both HDMI. So here we have the projector on the wall, I've got to say, and that's how you can move it. You can move it in any direction you want and you have got quite a lot of movement. So if you've got the projector on the floor, it is pretty easy to get it up onto the wall without having to pile it on a massive pile of books. I'm now going to show you how... I've got it pretty much at a 3 meter distance away from the wall and I can have it that big which is about the size of the standard high definition TV and then we can now make it as big as pretty much this from this distance and that's the biggest it will get from here and that is my only downfall with this projector because it's big the it isn't ideal for small rooms if you've got a large room and there's a large diff distance between where you're going to put the projector and the wall you can get quite big on the wall however from here where I am in this very small room it is very hard to get the projector big enough really on the wall so it is pretty small I'm now going to plug in the Nintendo Wii and show you what some basic gaming looks like So this is an example where the component comes in very useful. I'm just going to connect up the yellow one to the video and these other two are for audio so I'm just going to put them over there like so. And that's why it's very useful to have a component. If I didn't have a component and just HDMI and PC VGA I wouldn't really be able to connect the Nintendo Wii here up with ease, it would be very difficult to do so. So I'm now going to show you what it like is like up on the wall. So the Nintendo Wii is now all wired up, all I have to do is hit on here, the video button, and then it will switch right over to the Nintendo Wii. Here we also have the controls for the PC, S-Video, Component, HDMI 1 and 2. We also have a brightness adjustment button and the power. If we go further down, here you will see we've got an exit button, default, we've got some arrows, menu, memory, colour mode, and aspects, sharpness, gamma, pattern, and blank. When you hit the blank button, the screen automatically goes blue, as it is now, and that is a very useful feature. I will show you more of the remote and the options interface after I've showed you the Nintendo Wii. So here we have it on the wall, the Nintendo Wii. As we see here, I've got the sensor bar over there on the floor and it is causing a bit of a problem, but the quality is very good. If I just hit this game and hit start, this is one of the games you can play, well, on the Wii, and it is really easy to set up and it's a great gaming system. As I say again, a normal person could easily set this up and play it. It's just like plugging something into a TV. It's very simple indeed. If I just refocus the projector, like so, you can manually get it perfect, the quality, and you can make it whatever size you want. So it's excellent. You can play this with other devices. DVD players are also component. PlayStations 2, Xboxes have got HDMI, and also PlayStation 3, so you can play any game on this thing. But the unfortunate thing is about this, it doesn't have built-in speakers, which is very unfortunate indeed. If it did, you would be able to play it with inbuilt speakers, and it doesn't really even have an output for speakers, which is unfortunate. So where the output for sound comes from has got to be from the device you're using. So the problem is, the Nintendo Wii doesn't really have the standard output for audio, so you will have to find yourself buying a few adapters. If I just show you some brief playthrough of this game now. 
so you can see what the quality is like for real. Another thing is this camera does perform pretty well on standard walls. You don't really need to project a screen. However, it would perform a lot better and a lot more clear and crisp if you had a projector screen. With one of them, it would be a lot better. However, unfortunately, I haven't got one, so I am projecting it onto the wall. And it is pretty good. It's nice and bright. This is daytime, and overnight it performs even better. It is even brighter. You have got... Even you've got brightness adjustments, which I will show you in a minute after I've finished doing this. So the colours are very vibrant and bright. That is another thing. It's not washed out at all. It's not grainy. It is crisp and it is nice and bright and vibrant. So now let's take a look at the menu. Here I still have the Wii on and I'm, what I'm going to do is on the remote I'm going to hit the menu button. On here we get a full range of options and things we can choose from. And what I'm going to show you there is the first one up here is colour mode. You can change it from living room to natural and it will alter that to all different colour modes. But you're not really going to see how beneficial that is on camera as it doesn't really show how good it is. You can adjust the brightness, which you may see the difference in the brightness. If I just knock it up all the way to the top brightness, it is a lot more brighter now. And it is daytime, and this is a room with light shining right into it. And that is way too bright, so I'm going to turn the brightness right down. After a while, I guess the projector will dim as the lamp comes to an end of its lifetime. However, it is very bright, so I can't see that really happening. You can adjust the, the contrast the colour saturation, the tint, the sharpness, colour temperature, skin tone, advanced, power consumption is on normal, you can put it on economical as well, and auto iris. On signal we have things like the position of it, we can actually move it around here like so. From the remote you can move the screen around the place and if we just click the escape button you can pull it from film, you can put motion detection and more advanced settings. Here we have power off settings, protection, trigger, just general settings, nothing too special. Memory settings, general info, the lamp has been used for 59 hours, so it's 59 hours old, this lamp. The source is on video, the video signal is PAL, and there's the set serial and status of the projector. So that's pretty much all the settings you have on here. You can click memory and you can click the, any button on the remote and it will just take you straight to the option on there. If we click aspect we can change it so we can make it bigger, we can make it widescreen so when you've got your computer plugged in that may help a lot. We can put it on normal which as you see it's gone square and if we put it back to full it goes back to widescreen. So you can adjust it if you've got it on a small wall. And that's pretty much all the settings, and you can also hit the default button. The final thing I want to show you on the settings is the blank button. And it simply makes the screen go blue. This is only useful for when you've got a laptop plugged in and a Epson and a Nintendo Wii. You can flick between them, and you can even flick between blank while you do something, and you don't want everyone in the presentation room or the gaming room, whatever it is, to see that. So that's all the settings, that's the gameplay of the Nintendo Wii. It is a high definition, full intensity projector. It is an excellent projector and I recommend this for anyone who's got a gaming setup. If you've got a small room, something on small scale, I really recommend that you keep away from this projector. It's good for big rooms and it's an excellent projector. It's bright, it's got everything you need. So it's a very good projector. Overall, I would give it a scoring 6 out of 10. It's just the size which has let it down and the fact about small rooms. Otherwise, it's a great projector. For more latest tech news and reviews, head over to theworldoftech.net. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.